your Bibles with me this morning and turn to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. We'll be looking at verses 14 and 15 to begin with as the intro. Stand with me as we honor the reading of God's word this morning. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 14 and 15, Paul wrote these words, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in the all things into him who is the head Christ. Most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you again for this time to stand before your people. I thank you for this opportunity to be able to stand before your word and to be able to share your word with your uh, people and to be able to show them the direction that each of us are to go in our lives. Again, Lord, just open our hearts this morning so that we may receive these words. May we leave this place changed forever so that we can show everyone the love that you have showered upon us, that we are to share with each and every person who we come in contact with. Lord, just lead us, guide us, and direct us. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I entitled this message, Grow Up in Christ. Grow Up in Christ. And one of the things that I've learned is that Even when we think that we've grown up enough, we need to grow up some more. Even when we think that we've grown up enough, we need to grow up some more. And and one of the things that I remember back, and I know this is a few years back, but I remember when I graduated from high school. Boy, I graduated, one of them cocky individuals, thought I knew it all, everything was great, had everything under control, everything was going to be perfect. Man, I was grown up. Guess what? I needed to grow up some more. I went off to uh, Ohio State University, the great Buckeyes up there, with Woody Hayes at that time, so that tells you how old I am. But again, you know, I got to, got to off to the university and thought, man, I'm going to be great. Little did I know what school had prepared me for. I was not prepared for college. I had to grow up some more. Well, I decided that uh, that wasn't for me, and so I stuck around for a while, and then I decided that it was time to, you know, I'm, I'm big enough, I'm strong enough, I, you know, i got all this knowledge now, let me go off and do something else, and so I joined the Army, thinking, man, my dad had been in the military for over 20 years, and, you know, I saw what he went through, so I must know everything about the military. But let me tell you something, those first few days in basic training, I learned that you had to grow up, okay? And I had to grow up. And as and then all the times in my life is growing up. And, and even when I became, and I was still, had, had just started at Ohio State is when I became a Christian and had received the Lord as my Lord and Savior. You know, one of the things was I was one of those fire-breathing new converts, you know. I thought I knew everything it was about being in Christ. But I needed to grow up. I needed to learn some things. I needed to take in what God was trying to do with my life and how he was going to change my life. And I can tell you today that there's even those who call themselves Christians who have never come to the point of growing up. They never got past their salvational moment. And what a great moment that is. We can look in Scripture and understand this. Paul never forgot his salvational moment. You know that, right? He never forgot what God had done in his life when he came face to face with Jesus Christ. And to this day, I remember falling down those steps and picking myself up, running to the preacher and scaring him to death because he saw me come running down the aisle. But you know, we still must grow each and every day. Just because we reach a certain age in our life, we still need to grow up in Christ. So God laid upon my heart to share four points with you this morning about growing up in Christ. And we find that the very first one that he laid upon my heart deals with growing up concerning 
possessions. Growing up concerning possessions. And I read in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, and it says, And he said to them, Take heed and beware of the covenantness of one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. You know, one of the things that I have found is that many Christians place too much value on money and possessions. Now, let, now let's be honest with each other, all right, this morning. Let's be honest. How many of us really like money? Okay. How many of us like the things that God has blessed us with? But let me tell you something. If those things start to take control of you, starts taking over your life, and that's all that you can focus on, guess what? You haven't grown up in Christ. You have not grown up in Christ because we are to seek Him first. Matter of fact, we get a great warning in 1 Timothy 16, uh, 6.10. And it isn't wrong, and again, let me say this, it isn't wrong to have money. You hear me, all right? It isn't anything wrong with having money. But we must heed the spiritual warning that comes from 1 Timothy 16. And it says, the love of money is the root of all evil. What are you loving this morning? Are you in love with the Lord this morning? Are you in love so much with Him that you're willing to give Him everything that you are, everything that you have, that you give and thank Him for the blessings that He has shared in your life? He has showered them down on us. I can tell you this, America is the richest country in the world. Even though a lot of times when we look around, we still see the poorness of this country. And I'm not talking about people who are hungry and those who are on the street. I'm talking about the moral poorness of this country. But we need to understand that there's nothing wrong with the money as long as we're laying it before the Lord and asking Him in what direction that we are to use this money that He has blessed us with. You see, if we grow up concerning possessions when we give God first place, we see great things that happens. When we give Him first place, let me tell you something. I have found that I am more blessed today than I have ever been in my life, even though I make less today than what I did when I left the army. I still I am greatly blessed today with all that I need because the Lord has blessed my life because I am seeking the kingdom of God. You are seeking the kingdom of God. If you're seeking the kingdom of God, matter of fact, in Matthew 6.33 it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I'm amazed by that verse. Because we, as His children, we don't stop at the moment that we were saved. We don't stop there when we've got our fire insurance in hand. We don't stop when we think that we've all got it right. We keep seeking that kingdom, and we contend for that kingdom at all times. We go to Him at all times, looking for His direction. We want to see the kingdom. I heard this morning uh, Jensen Franklin say in his message this morning, and the question was, was this. He says, how do you get to heaven? How do you get to heaven? I loved his answer. His answer was this. You seek the kingdom of God every day. You seek the kingdom of God wherever you're at, and you seek Him at every moment of your life. Whether that's at work, whether that's at school, whether it's uh, if you're retired, it's uh, when you're out doing all the other work. And one of the things I found for the uh, term for retirement is just, more work, okay? More work. I find more retirees busier today than they were when they were working. But you know what? We must seek Him each and every day. We must be willing to, to, to find where it is that God wants us. Even in our workplaces, we must find that place before God. So, again... If you are depending, if you're depending upon all those possessions you have, let me tell you what, you're not going to take it with you. You're not going to take it with you. Matter of fact, you know, one of the greatest statistics that I read here recently was those people who save up so much 
that they, they want to pass it on. One of their excuses is they say, I want to pass it on to my kids or on to my grandkids or whatever. You know what happens? Over 75%, it was discovered, what you pass on to your children or your grandchildren is gone like that. Is gone like that. See, they didn't have to earn it. They didn't have to wait upon the blessing of the Lord. It was just given to them. It's when you wait upon the Lord, and the Lord is the one who blesses you. You know, for the ones who are still working, guess who blessed you with that job? Whether you love it or not, guess who blessed you with that job? It provides for your family. It provides for you. It provides. God was the one who provided that job for you. We need to understand that we need to give him thanks. We need to give him all the honor and all the glory for the blessings that he gives us. For the things that you own, for the things that you enjoy, you need to be thanking the Lord each and every day for those things so that they do not take control, so that they do not become idols in your hands, and you begin worshiping them. I've seen too many Christians who have actually worshipped the building that they were setting up. Can I tell you, this is a blessing from God. I know many of you have sacrificed over the years to have this built. I know many of you have done great works here, and I honor that, and I, and, and I just thank the Lord for that. But guess what? This is not the church. You are. And we must understand that when we're in this, even though it is beautiful and He has provided it, it is no more than a possession that He has given to us so that we can honor Him with it. We must seek Him at all times. The second thing that I found was that we must grow up concerning pleasure. Concerning pleasure. I know this is a hard one because all of us love different things in life that we love to do. But here's what the Scripture says to us. From 2 Timothy 3, 4, we read these. It says, Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. for you. What is it in life that you really love and enjoy? What is it in life that you get great pleasure out of? It, 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 you know, for me, when I go to an amusement park, i got to find the highest and fastest roller coaster, and I found it in Carowinds last week, okay? And when I went over the top of that thing, and it started hitting 95 miles per hour, and I was looking straight down at the ground, I'm saying, God, you proved your point. This isn't as pleasurable as I thought because that ground was coming up quick. So we've got to realize the fact is, is here's the thing that I have found. In those pleasures that you enjoy, are you willing to give them to God? Are you willing, if God says, no, nah, I can't do that today, are you willing to listen? Or how many times do we tell God, no, nah, I've got this time off, so I'm going to go do this instead of what you've called me to do. I wonder if we would be willing to give that pleasure up for the Lord. You know, in the world today, we live in a society that is pleasure-seeking, pleasure-loving. Billions of dollars are spent each and every day or yearly, and people are searching for more fun than more than of God. It's amazing, isn't it? That we can spend billions and billions of dollars a year on pleasure and never look to God for it. I can tell you, when you learn to give everything to the Lord, what you learn is, is there's more pleasures that come into your life. There's more that comes in. Because I can tell you the greatest po uh, pleasure possible is knowing Jesus Christ. He offers real and lasting enjoyment. And He satisfies life for eternally. In Psalm 107, we read these words, And fills the hungry soul with goodness. After He satisfies the longing soul, He fills the hungering soul with goodness. 
See, it begins. If you want real pleasure in your life, I don't care if you're planning a vacation. I don't care where it is that you're going. I've got another vacation coming up. I'm, I, I got a great place that we're going to, that me and Geneva, and guess what? It's only me and Geneva going. Okay? The kids are staying home. I get to be with my wife. But this thing is this. I know without God, I would not even have the pleasure of going there. Because of the blessings of my wife, of the blessings of being able to go, the blessings of having the time to go, the blessings of of the the pleasures of the church, of knowing that the church is taken care of when when I'm out, and knowing that you're here and you're having a great service. What a blessing that is to my life. And again, that pleasure, that enjoyment, because I know that God is at work. You know, we need to grow up concerning pleasure. What we need to be faithful in is is that we need to be faithful, first of all, and and it should always, anything that you do, whether you're planning your vacation right now, whether you're planning something to do next week, whether you're planning to get your children involved in something next week, whether you're planning to do some type of activity today, guess where it needs to start? It needs to start with prayer. It needs to begin with prayer. Everything that we do needs to begin with prayer. We need to put it before the Lord and ask His blessing upon it or His direction upon it. And if it's the wrong thing to do, put it upon our hearts that it's the wrong place to be. See, we need to be faithful in prayer. And then we need to be faithful in the ministry of God's Word. We need to have God's Word on a daily basis. You know, I I've had several people who said, I'm going on vacation. And I've asked them, well, are you taking your Bible with you? No. Why should I? Well, guess what? Just because you're on vacation doesn't mean that you don't need a fill-up of God's Word. Because I can tell you, if you take a week's vacation and you don't have any of God's Word in you during that week, you're going to be awful dry by the end of the week. You need to have God's Word each and every day. And I'm not talking about that you have to spend an hour and things like that. I'm talking about spend a few minutes each day before the Lord asking His Word to fill you and to feed you. I love that the way Jesus says that man does not live by bread alone, but by the Word of God. We are to eat, we are to partake. How many of you would give up a sandwich today because you're hungry? I wonder how many would give up the Word of God today and wonder why their spirits were dim. See, we need the Word each day. We need to be faithful to it. We need to read it each day. And then we need to enjoy the fellowship with other Christians. I'm going to tell you what. There shouldn't be a happier celebration than when Christians get together. Every Sunday morning, this ought to be a celebration. I don't care what type of songs we sing. I don't care whether it's fast, slow, in between, whatever. I don't care whether we stand, whether we sit, whether you stand on your head. I don't care. It ought to be the greatest celebration when Christians come together because in their presence is Jesus Christ himself. When he is in your presence, I don't know how you can't help but want to shout to the Lord. You know, we need to grow up concerning possessions. We need to grow up concerning pleasure. But we also need to grow up about things concerning popularity. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, let me just read you some words from John chapter 5, verse 44. And it says there, How can you believe who receives honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from the only God. You know, it's natural. Believe me, it's natural. And I love it when I stand at the, at the back, back there as you all are leaving. And, and I love it when you say it's been a great time in the Lord's house today. I love it when you say it was a good message and everything. But you know what? I've learned a long time ago. I love those messages where you come to the back door and say, Hey, Pastor, you stepped on my toes today. And I love those days. But it's it's natural for us to all to desire appreciation, isn't it? How many of us like to be appreciated? How many of you like being put down all the time? 
I, I, I'd rather be appreciated, wouldn't you? I, I, I'd rather be loved by other people. I, I, I'd love to get along with everybody. But we desire appreciation sometimes to the, to the extreme. But what we should seek is we should seek exaltation and glory from them. In other words, them showing that your life is in line with God. I love it when I can be with other Christians who I know that their lives are in line with God. I, I, I love it when I can stand around and we can talk about the goodness of God. We can talk about the blessings of God. We can talk about the mercy of God. We can talk about the grace of God. We can talk about what God's doing in my family's life, what He's doing in my children's life, what He's doing in my life as a whole. That is grand because we're giving all the honor and glory to God. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to grow up in concerning this thing about popularity. Can I tell you, popularity most of the time is short-lived. It's short-lived. Now, for some of our senior adults here, let me just pick your brain for a minute. How many of you can remember back in your uh, younger days, maybe when you were 20, and, and, and maybe you could remember who the most popular singer of the time was? I mean, just think about it. Are they popular today? For a lot of them, their songs are not even played today, unless you can find some oldie station that is still milking some of the songs. Now, what I'm amazed by is that some of the groups that played in the 50s and 60s, they're still out there trying to tour around. And when you see them playing, and it looks like uh, Grandma and Grandpa done sat down, and now they're trying to still play that bass. Man! What popularity, but I can tell you it's short-lived. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. You know, just ask Tiger Woods, and I'm sorry. Tiger Woods was popular. He's not even at the Masters this year, and so nobody's really mentioned him. How quickly popularity goes, fades away. But we still seek it. But, you know, growing up concerning popularity means seeking to please God and to glorify God. Because guess what? Those who pat you on the back, those who will forget you tomorrow, God won't. God is with you every day. And in being with you every day, He's the one that's lifting you up. I love the old uh, poem that has about the footsteps in the sand. And you know when the, the gentleman realizes that there's only one set of footprints and he, and he looks and he turns and he says, well, what about these times? And the Lord answers and says, those are the times when I carry you. God carries us. He loves on us. He gives us that popularity that we need because of not who we are, but because of who He is. Isaiah 26, 4 says these words. It says, Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yahweh the Lord is everlasting strength. Do you get those words? It says, Trust in the Lord forever. It doesn't mean that you only trust in Him when you have issues in your life. You don't just trust in Him when it's convenient. You don't put on your regal white robes on Sunday morning, and that's the only time that you trust Him. You are to trust Him forever. And when you do trust Him forever, then He gives you everlasting strength. That doesn't mean that your health is going to be perfect. That doesn't mean that there's not going to come tragedies into your life. But guess how you're going to have the strength to get through it? I applaud some of our senior, senior citizens in here. Because I've learned something as I've gotten older. Growing old is not for the weak. Think about that. It's not for the weak because every morning I wake up, I find something that didn't work the same way as it did yesterday. And some people would say that's a weakness, but guess what? The Lord's the one that dusts me off, gets my brain going, and I'm ready to run for Him. 
Each of us ought to be ready to run. I don't care whether you're 100 years old or whether you're 10 years old. You should be running for the Lord every day, and you will find that everlasting strength to get through whatever you're going through. Let me get this last one. Grow up concerning position. Grow up concerning position. In John 6.27 it says, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but the, for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set seal on Him. Do not labor for the food that perishes. Oh, can I tell you, there's some Christians that put too much importance on their position. They live, they eat, they sleep for their job. There's even Christians who are in churches who seek positions in the church who were never called. And then they wonder why their ministry is not blessed. It's because it was a position that they were never called to. And I can tell you, after seeking through all these years of of ministry, and as God has has taken me through this journey of over 30 years now in the ministry, one of the things that I've learned is that He has called me to be a pastor. He has called me to be a preacher of His Word. And the only time that I find great things about this position is the fact that I am preaching God's Word. I'm teaching God's Word. I'm leading people to God's Word. And people are coming to God, whether it's here at this church or whether it's at the nursing homes or whether it's at the senior centers or whether it's wherever God carries us, we need to be about doing the job of God and not worried about a position. We find great joy in the fact of when we're doing what God has called us to do. Oh, I tried after I got out of the military and talking about having to grow up again. Oh, I was in my 30s and thought again, man, I just finished over 20 years of military life. Thought I knew it all. Thought I was strong. Had children who were almost grown. Had it all planned and everything else. And God kept saying, no, you're going where I'm telling you. Even though he had had me in ministry, even though I had served in many churches while I was overseas and had served over the places in the United States, God says, I want you full time. And I said, no. I learned how to sell life insurance. I learned how to do pest control with Sears Termite and Pest Control. I worked for Raby Electric and went up on the tallest towers and changed out some of the itty-bitty lights that are up on top of some of those small towers. I've run conduit. I've run wire everywhere. I learned to do different things. I sold cars for Christ. And let me tell you something. I was not a happy man because I was more worried about a job and that position and doing what I wanted. But I can tell you, life comes with happiness and joy and peace when you do what God wants you to do. I know work is necessary. And I know everyone is not called to the ministry. I know everyone is called, though. I know everyone is commissioned. I know everyone is commanded to share the Lord Jesus Christ. But what we have to do and what has become the key and those who are following God's life, what they have called them to, is that we must give God first place in our life. We must give God first place in our life. We need to take time to do God's work, attend His house, encourage others, tell others about how good the Lord has been to you, how good things are with Him. Let me tell you something. With all this, when we grow up concerning possession, when we grow up concerning pleasure, when we grow up concerning popularity, and when we grow up concerning position, there's something that's waiting for us that no one but God can give us. God has got a glorious promotion that awaits those who grow up in Christ. The greatest promotion can ever have. See, they will be promoted. If you are one of God's children, you're going to be promoted to a land that is truly free, 
You're going to go, you're, you're going to be promoted to a land that is fairer than day. It's eternal. And in that eternal place, you're going to find that there is no longer any sin. There's no longer any sorrow. There's no longer any tears because your life will just be filled with joy. Not, again, because of who you are, what you've done, but what Christ has done for you. What a great promotion of knowing that it's going to be eternal in the heavens. This is what Revelation 21, 23, and I end with this. It says, The city had no need of the sun or the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is the lights. See, when we grow up, we set aside childish things. When we grow up, we realize what it meant when Jesus said that in order to follow me, you must die to self. Let me tell you, I don't care what age you are today. If you have not died to self, you may have doubt about whether you truly have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, because if it's still all about you, it's all about what you can get. And if, and if you're using the world as a standard, because the world tells you, get whatever you can, run with it hard, do all this, and, and you'll be successful and you'll be happy. I don't know. All I know is I see a lot of rich people who are not happy because they keep trying to fill stuff in to make themselves happy. But where that great happiness comes is when we've grown up in Christ. And we find that our lives are solid because not only the promise that He is with us here, but we will be with Him forever. I don't know about you, but I love that fact that He said, Hey, I'm going up there. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you will come. And there's going to be a great mansion or mansions. It's according to the translation that you want to use. But there's going to be a place there that He built by His own hands for you and me. And I can't wait. Because I know it's got to be better than any builder that's built anything down here. I know it's going to be better than any of the skyscrapers I've seen. It's going to be better than any of the cathedrals that I saw in Europe. It's going to be better than anything that I can even imagine here. Because what He has built is perfect. The life for which He gave you is perfect. Because it's not of you, it's of Him. It's by what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and for me. You see, we can grow up and we can grow each and every day. Let me tell you, the day that you believe, the day that you believe that you know it all, that you have it all, I am guarantee you God's going to knock you down. Because you're going to find out that you don't have it all. But I can tell you this. And I proclaim this by the Word of God. I am the richest man in this world. I don't care about how much you got in your pocket because I ain't got much in my pocket. Matter of fact, I don't know whether I can pay for lunch today. But what I'm telling you is, I don't have to have money. I don't have to have that. I don't have to have popularity. I don't have to have all these things. What I have to have is Jesus Christ in my life. And because my Father owns everything, He owns every cattle on every hill, He owns the world, He owns the universe, and He says that I am His child and I have an inheritance, I am the richest man in the world. How about you? you? Is your life rich today? Is your life in a place where there's great joy and there's great treasures that you know that you can hold on to that can never be taken away from you? My God's promised that once I come to Him, nobody, no thing can take me out of His hand. I can spit in Satan's eye. I can tell him where he's going because I know where I'm going. How about you? Do you have that great pleasure? Do you have that great joy? Do you have that great possession called Jesus Christ? Because He's calling today. Let's stand and sing our invitation song.